one of the things that I really excited to kind of dive into is kind of how Gearbox makes it, right? So how do you take what you know from an indie game point of view, and then how do you translate that to a, a major uh, AAA game company? So um, what we've we've got here is a, a fantastic overview. This is absolutely uh, generalized here, but I want to kind of lean on the, the Gearbox folks to explain how does a um, game get made? Hello everyone, uh, thanks for having us here. Um, so yeah, I'm there to present how we're uh, having, we're building the game in general at Gearbox. Uh, here you can see a very high level, like uh, like Brian said, of what we're doing. Uh, but before diving into what we see on the screen, I just want to maybe talk about the context about why it's necessary to like make something more evolved when you make a game. Uh, like one of the main reasons is that as a project grows really the impact of errors just goes uh, high like uncontrollably uh, as you have developers and as you add new code and as you add people and your project grows uh, the problem with errors is that they compound they, they're not just adding up one on top of each other so you really need a strategy to uh, minimize their impact and to minimize the number of errors that you have and here you can see the pieces that we're using to manage that problem. So, uh, uh, yeah, so the strategy goes several fold. So first you need to prevent errors from entering the code base. You need to make sure the errors don't stay for long and you need to provide quick feedback for to achieve that. So uh, here you can see the pieces that can help us do that. Uh, if you look at the yellow box on the screen there, you can see uh, a tool that we uh, are now using in terms of your box. Uh, it's called Unreal Game Sync. So uh, th this tool is something provided by Epic. So that's something that can be available for anyone working on the Epic project. And what's special about it is that it's it's interacting with the uh, Perforce and not quite JetBrains, but JetBrains does uh, provide information back into Unreal Game Sync. Uh, if you do the small like work necessary to make it happen, uh, so that that's really the entry point for anybody working on the project. So pe first thing people do when they start working on a project, they install UGS on your game sync and then use it to sync the the game uh, the, the project on their workstation. So from perform, which acts like as the backbone of everything else. So uh, UGS syncs and then uh, people will just use that to sync every day so people start in the morning they sync to UGS uh, and then uh, they work and then you can see the blue boxes there uh, you are either a coder maybe an artist maybe an auto designer so you could see like a, a pattern there so there's two different like boxes to uh, represent different uh, specialties so people would work on their content locally and then they would submit and then uh, if you look follow along the the arrows there uh, it leads to the green boxes uh, these are the jet brains uh, the, the team city builds that automated so every time somebody submits into perforce uh, then team city will just pick up the changes thanks to uh, triggers automated triggers and uh, depending on what people did submit in the build and the in perforce then jet brains would just test the proper things so if i'm a coder uh submitting code that's the the up portion uh then team cd would build the code make an engine deploy it and then it will notify uh it's a server there's a metadata server i won't go too much in the details but then that makes it so UGS knows that the editor is available, so people can actually sync uh, to versions for which editors exist. So this whole loop is automated. And uh, I'd say similarly, when somebody submits content, uh, that's the down part of the graph. TCD would detect that green box again on the right, the bottom right, and then uh, the proper build will be kickstarted. Uh, to test the content changes and to provide quick feedback. Uh, feedback will be provided back to UGS again uh, so that people know if the bad, the changes were bad or, or not, if, if it passed the test. So that like at the end of the day, when you make an actual code build, the, the package, the QA will test 
uh, or several times a day. In fact, we do that more than once a day. Uh, like people know that their change will probably break the bill and they need to fix it like now. Uh, so that, that's really the strategy there. So we have those loops going on all the time. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I think that's why there's no time, right? Because it's a loop, right? Yeah, case. it's a loop, exactly. It's, it's a loop. It's just weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let me kind of echo back, see if I get this right. So if I'm a coder, um, I have an, uh, access to a custom UE engine build you, know, you, you can get. Um, and then I make my changes into the engine. Um, I can compile that locally. That I submit the code. It runs tests, automated tests, and it does a build. It stores that game engine build and then allows that build to go back to Unreal Game Sync so that when artists come in the next morning at maybe a scheduled time, like 8 in the morning, 8.30, they get the latest changes on a green build from the Unreal Game Sync, not, mm -hmm. not, not P4V or any other sort of thing. It's Unreal Game Sync's the first thing they see. 